I like to call this April council work session and regular council meeting to order. And let's remember all those who passed away during the month, including my sister who passed away last week, uh, Pete D'Augustino, who did a lot for this borough as far as you know, the cleanup crew and working with people with the baskets on Mill Street and was a true uh, gentleman to this town. And also Steve Wade. I don't know if anybody knew Stevie Wade, but I don't think he ever had in his vocabulary the word no. I don't think he ever said no to anybody. You talk about if we could all, we want to be like somebody or your kids want to be like somebody, he's the guy that you really want to follow because he was truly one of the best guys I ever knew. If you don't mind, Mr. President, Mike Peruzio. Pardon me? Mike Peruzio, please. Mike, that's right. And Mike Peruzio, who was father owned Central Supply and, and worked there for many years. Please salute the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation. Under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Mike was 70. Uh, 74. 74. Mike was. He was a gentleman. He was a gentleman. I thought that guy lived to be. Mr. Gerard. Present. Here. Professor. Ms. Cohen. Mr. Petrochi. Mr. D. Giuseppe. Here. Okay, we're going to try to go. There's a lot of people that want to do presentations tonight. So I'm going to go out of order with this agenda, with the work session and the regular meeting. So I think that before we get into public participation, I don't want to hold all these uh, groups up that are out there. Let's start, Chief. You got them lined up in, in order. So let's start with Mars Dairy, I guess. Kurt, nice seeing you, buddy. Nice. Wow. Oh, uh, just for the record, if Lorraine has to leave, her mom's pretty sick and she. She gets a phone call, she's going to have to leave. So, if so everybody knows why she walked out, that's the reason why. Morris, how you doing? I'm good. Is it okay if I take this mask off? Yes. Thank you. Just state your name and address and everything for the record. My name is Morris Terry. I represent No More Pain Incorporated. I, am from, I live in Bristol Township, but my family does live in the borough here on Penn Street. Um, thank you for letting me speak tonight. Um, a few of you guys here, I, I know personally and friends with. There's two different things, reasons why I'm here tonight. Um, so one of the reasons why I'm here tonight, uh, a couple, I'll say about three months ago, a friend of mine wanted to get into the council and being a part of the council. He heard, you know, things going on. He wanted to join the council, and he asked me about it. I was like, go on YouTube, look at some of the videos, man, get an idea, how, you know, see how things go. A day or two later, he called me back. I was like, Morris, that was the most craziest idea for you to ever Because <laughs> I don't want to be a part of that mess. So I was like, what are you talking about, right? So I went back, as far as back as our, our event last year where we, and I spoke to you guys, me and Cora, and um, not only in that video of where I spoke about No More Pain in Our March, there was a few videos after that I was like, Oh, okay, I see what, why this guy was kind of upset, like didn't want to be a part of, of, you, of this amazing uh, group of people here. So I would, you know, and I'm not going to go into, you know, knick-knack and all that stuff. All I would suggest is that when we're doing these council mind, meetings, be mindful that there are people that want to be a part of this. Um, so we can somehow be, you know, more encouraged and, and more professional as we do that. I think we'll have a greater impact in our community. So. That part, that's, I just wanted to say that. Thank you. Um, thank you. You're welcome. And two, again, a few guys who really helped me out um, after our march last year, which, again, thank you guys for allowing us to do that protest. Um, 
that uh, really helped out with No More Pain after that. A few different events I had. Uh, Mr. Devine helped out. Greg Penz, who's not here, helped out um, with different events for No More Pain. Um, but definitely uh, uh, Chief Henry. I just want to uh, praise Chief Henry because Chief Henry, since our march last year, I think me and him have met a dozen of times and come out with ways that we can better um, work together with com community and police. So we do have a great chief in this borough. Um, me and him are working together, again, like I said, to really come up with different ideas and how we can, the community and police relationships are. So please stay tuned and please support those initiatives when we bring them to you guys, if, if you may. Um, with that being said, my second part of this is I wanted to ask you guys if you knew what Juneteenth was. So my, my, when I put my glasses on, usually I go off the cuff, but I have a, a group of people who prepare something for me. So just give me a couple minutes to put my glasses. Don't say nothing, Tony. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so, so I'm, part, we put, I'm a part of No More Pain Incorporated uh, with other community leaders want to put together a Juneteenth event in Bristol Borough, down to Worth. Not a protest, not a march, it's an event similar to our African American days, our Puerto Rican days, our Italian days, and so forth. Um, so I just want to read to you the importance of Juneteenth, okay? So Juneteenth is a holiday that has been unrecognized for decades in our mainstream society. On June 19, 1865, enslaved black Americans in Graveston, Texas, were informed by Union soldiers that they were free. This formal announcement was made two and a half years after the Emancipation Proclamation was signed and months after the Civil War had ended. <clears throat> the commemoration of this mass emancipation is now known as a holiday Juneteenth. Help us celebrate the significance of this holiday and acknowledge its history and observance of Juneteenth. No more pain incorporated and several members of the community, including the Historical African American Day Committee, have partnered with this event to commemorate this holiday as well as recognize the importance to our history and community. As a collective unit, we recognize the importance of celebrating our history and culture amidst a climate that has been unfavorable to those who have shared our culture globally. The Lower Bucks Juneteenth celebration will be held, if approved, on June 19th, 2021, near the wharf at Bristol Borough, 12 to 5 p.m. It will include entertainment, include everything you would see at your normal events that you have down there. But again, you guys know how I am. I like to come to you, let you know what I'm doing in your backyard, get kind of like your blessing um, and things of that nature. We, we uh, looked up everything we needed. We talked to uh, James Dillon. He did let us know that um, a few organizations did cancel their event, but didn't tell us if we were or weren't allowed to have it. So, we uh, looked up the COVID regulations. We have everything, um, I have everything you can imagine from A to Z covered down to COVID regulations and things like that. So I just want to present that to you guys. And if you guys had any questions for me about it, to answer them. Let me explain where we're at with all the events this year. We are not, as a council, and I think I could speak for everybody, are not canceling anybody's event. It's up to the, to the organization to cancel or to keep their event on. So right now we know that Celtic Day has canceled. That's the first event every year. And Puerto Rican Day has canceled because it's their 50th anniversary and they wanted to make sure it was a great celebration. African American Day follows. We haven't heard anything. Then it's Italian Day, uh, the doo-wop, and Bristol Day in October. That's our events and our first Fridays. All the first Fridays right now have been canceled as of, we, we don't know, for the entire year or maybe until August or September. As far as your event, I don't think anybody here is, would do anything we can to support your organization. So if you think you can make this happen, how it works is you get an application, you fill it out, council never meets with you again, you go through the emergency management, Mr. Merle Winslow, and our police chief. They do all the events, they or help you organize it, tell you what you need for the event, they set the parameters of the event, and you're, you are dealing with the governor's restrictions also. That's what we looked if up to If you think, Marsh, you could pull it off and it's, it's great, we support you. 
So I don't think anybody here is against. Well, more, you come here, you, like I said, I don't want to let, us know let and, you know what's going exactly. on. And I know last when we last year we did a pro, it was kind of different. And so we you invited you guys. you pulled that off to with the, in the class that you did with that, I'm sure you could pull anything off. So I, you did a great yeah. job with that. Yeah, so. you did. I appreciate that, guys. Thank you. So I just that's all I really wanted, just to bring those two things to you guys, man. Um, and again, thank you for supporting them. We're paying. There's a lot of different organizations being a part of this event. So as you know, you'll see those names and those those organizations come later. But there's a lot of people that really want to see this happen, and we really want to do it in Bristol. It's it's kind of like we're, we want to host the first one here. So it's like every year it might be somewhere different. Right. But I think this year hosting it in Bristol and having the success we had last year. Um, with with a protest, if we're doing a, a educational event, I think that'll still, and and it's and it's more about inclusion and diversity as well. So, you know, our main goal is to bring people of all uh, backgrounds to this event, just to be educated and understand what Juneteenth is. So I thank you guys. So this is Mr. Dillon. I know you said you spoke to Mr. Dillon. I we emailed. Email. Jim loves emails, so I can tell you <laughs> that. You send him an email, he's going to respond to you. And you got the application. Yes. Yeah, thank you. Thank and you. And on a personal note, if there's anything I can do personally for your organization, I appreciate you guys. Just thank let you. Let me know. Thank you guys so much. Have a, Thanks, have a good run of the night. And behave, man. Thing. Evan and Stacy are involved with the AOC in the 21st century uh, group. The mayor is also on the, the board there of directors with the AOC, and he's been from day one working with these organizations. So we had a meeting, I think, was it a week ago or something? Mm -hmm. So we had a meeting, myself, Mrs. Collin, Mrs. Rodriguez, the AOC board, uh, members of the Bristol Borough School Board. And we're trying to brainstorm how we can improve the town on recreation, not only on athletics, but also education-wise. So, I mean, they have a great program, and we don't want to buck their system. We want to jump onto their system and just keep making things better. So they're here, which they come every year, to try to just give us a brief overview of their summer program. And uh, Mike Poblosky from the school uh, school board has a great uh, programs going that he likes to implement. There's a survey that's out right now. I don't know if anybody's aware of that survey. It's been sent out to all the school kids and their parents. I think so far about 100 people. Am I right, Stacy? has been... We've been seeing the surveys come in, so about 100 people have responded so far to the survey, and uh, I'm going to turn it over to you guys and just give us a brief update on what's going on. Yeah, thank you so much, um, Council, for having us today in the community. As always, we love to be here in the Bristol Barrow community, serve the community as a whole. Um, right now, virtually, we have programs at Warren Snyder Girardi. Bristol High School and St. Mark's um, Catholic School. We do virtual tutoring, assignment completion, and enrichment uh, activities such as vendors, science programs, and things like that. Um, just recently, starting in April, we brought back some in-person tutoring at the Bristol Barrow High School, as well as one teacher ran program so far. We are looking to um, have more teachers jump on board to be back in person. It's a slow process to get all the guidelines in together. Um, but we're working on it, and we're confident by next year that we will have more in-person programming for our community here. Okay. Hello, I'm Stacy Tannum. Um, we are in the early stages of summer planning. Um, we're a little bit behind than where we usually are at, but we are uh, excited to share that we are planning to run in person this summer through 21st Century Community Learning Centers. Um, and we are actually expanding multiple sites so that we can abide by the school district and St. Mark's guidelines that have been working successfully this year. We will continue that into the summer. So we will be offering in-person operations um, at Snyder Girardi for rising first through sixth grade summer camp. 
Um, we will have a rising K through fourth grade summer camp at St. Mark's, a rising fifth through eighth grade summer camp at St. Mark's, and a rising seventh through eighth grade academic and enrichment programs uh, with the middle school students, as well as in-person and virtual combination for high school credit recovery and middle school remediation. So students who are in need of summer school, we will support that effort. Um, we are planning to offer support with summer reading projects for all grade levels. We'll get those projects from the teachers, purchase the books. Students can complete those projects with us at the school. Uh, we will also do math review for the previous school year, uh, I'm sorry, previous grade levels. Uh, they'll get reviews so that when they go back in the next school year, they're prepared. Uh, we also have referred tutoring in math and ELA. So students that have fallen behind but have been pushed through to the next grade level can be referred into our program to get tutoring through certified teachers. And then we will have recreations available as well, uh, athletics, arts, STEM programs through various vendors and our camp staff. We are hiring for the summer uh, since we are expanding sites and following distance guidelines, we will need extra staff. So um, we do have a <coughs> job application that we can share through the community. Um, and we are opening registration on Monday, uh, April 26th, I believe it is. Um, and more details will come out as registration is open, but we will be able to share the dates that each program is running at the various sites. Um, details vary per site based on each cohort, since we do have the three cohorts of grant funds. So details will continue to come out um, and we'll make it prevalent to all of the schools, all the partnering schools and, and districts. Do you have an email address or how are they going to sign up? How it will be an online registration. We'll make that available on Google Classrooms, through email, um, on the district and school websites. It'll be blasted on the social media sites. We've gotten pretty good at getting into all the little corners since everything has gone virtual. Okay. So it will be an online registration per site and available to all teachers and students and parents. We're also trying to get uh, Mr. Poblowski here, hopefully in May or in June, to try to give us back with uh, uh, Stacy to try to get the uh, give us some outline of what's going on with the survey and where kids are and and things like that. And if we could implement something maybe this fall, but Right now, I think with COVID and everything that's going on, it's so hard just to try to start, you know, bringing in new programs. Like kickball was a big success last year before COVID. We had to cancel it. Uh, basketball, we had no basketball last year because of COVID for the, for the kids. So there are some things, and they're also looking into senior activities. You know, we do have a lot of seniors that want to do things. So it looks like we're all on, on a good track right now to keep moving. Mr. D'Angelo submitted some of his requests. At the, he couldn't make the meeting. I talked to Mr. Ciccoletti. The school board is 150% behind this uh, group working together. So things are looking good. And if we can move forward, I didn't know how big this online sports is where they, they yeah. compete against each other yeah. and all this stuff. Cool. So you think it's just on the field. It's, they said a lot of kids are competing online. There are scholarships and all for this stuff, <coughs> which is amazing. Cool. So, uh, Joe? Yeah. Can you just talk a little bit about the, the survey and the uh, wide branch that the uh, survey is going to reach? Because you yes. guys spent a lot of time in putting that together. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so what's great about the survey is that uh, we are able to gauge the interests of the parents and the youth in the community. So not only to just offer sports or baseball or basketball specifically, but um, more options that might be more recreational versus competition based, um, more pickup versus leagues, um, things like that, offered at shorter amount of times, different times throughout the year, because people are available all different times, in the summer, in the spring, evening, Saturday morning. So we've, we've tried to encompass all of the options and gauge what the interests and needs are. Um, and it's a great way for all of the community organizations to see what the interests are and who can offer those different activities. 
Um, there are a lot of great organizations in this community. Um, 21st Century would not be a success without the support of the council and the school board and AOC um, and the, the PAC and the PTA and Thrive. So um, as we get the results of these surveys and we share them with the community, we're not only asking for all parents and guardians to fill out these surveys, we're also going to share the results um, with permission so that different organizations can offer different activities at different times with different experts right. in those fields. I mean, also at this meeting was Mary Jezewaldi, uh, Amy McElvain, and Jean Williams from the Grundy Foundation. They're all AOC, along with the mayor. And uh, I think it was a good group for, our, for the first meeting. And again, it, this COVID is just putting a damper on anything, and it's starting to get, you know, you think you got it under control, and now you're hearing it's spreading again. So. You know, the kids are playing baseball. I've been to numerous games for my grandkids. Uh, I don't know. We're doing the best we can, I think, as a town. So, anybody have any questions? Thank you for coming in. I would just I like to thank you it. for all your hard work. I really appreciate it. Thank you. We want to thank you guys as well. Without you guys, it would be really hard for us to, you know, thrive as we do. So, thank you, community and, and the school board and everybody here in Crystal Barrow. And the mayor is like acting as our liaison he could he brings us up to date on even when you're not here he can let us know what's going on you also have been incredible thank you thank thanks you. guys thank you thank you, thank you all. Good luck have a great one <laughs> i think the grundy foundation is next I don't know. Absolutely. So introduce yourself to council and let them know your position with the Grundy Foundation. Absolutely. Uh, my name is Mike McGinnis. I'm an attorney with Begley, Carlin, and Mandio. We're here on behalf of the Grundy Foundation in front of Bristol Borough Council tonight, uh, hoping to secure preliminary final approval. Uh, ordinarily, at the outset of uh, some sort of discussion or presentation about this, I would give information to council about who my client is. Uh, their involvement in the borough and what they're planning on doing here. I think obviously uh, given the Grundy Foundation's history in the borough, um, everyone here is likely very familiar uh, with those operations, so I'm going to spare uh, borough uh, recitation of uh, who the foundation is, but I would like to briefly get into uh, what we're here for tonight. This site is uh, comprised of multiple properties. Uh, it's about 2.46 acres. We have, in conjunction with our land development application, submitted a lot consolidation plan. If we are able to secure council's approval tonight, uh, after this meeting, we're going to work in conjunction with Mr. Salerno's office to make sure that all the documentation necessary uh, is approved by Mr. Salerno so we can record the appropriate uh, deed of consolidation and to move forward. The project is going to be phased. Uh, we're attempting to secure council's approval tonight for the entire scope of the project, but I will say with respect to our internal team conversations, we've referred to this as sort of a, a three-phase operation. The first phase pertains to the museum-associated improvements. The second phase uh, and third phase associated with the library annex edition and the amphitheater. And you can see the amphitheater as depicted on the rendering uh, in front of council tonight. The first phase, we're seeking to really begin construction as soon as possible. We're very excited and motivated to move forward. Our hope is that uh, we're able to really complete our improvements with the first phase by the end of the year. To give council a little bit of background of what the first phase is going to comprise, um, it's really consisting of the installation of a bathroom facility, uh, benches, ADA compliant paths, uh, pavilion, comfort station, and construction of stormwater facilities sufficient to address the improvements for phase one. 
Um, the reality is we're hoping to be able to host some outdoor events at this location. And we're sort of restricted uh, from doing that right now because we really don't have the appropriate restroom facilities on site. So we're attempting to address that. And, and just to be clear, these restrooms are, are not going to be just public restroom facilities that are open to everyone. The hours of operation of the restrooms are going to be tied to the museum tour, uh, just because I know that that was a, uh, a question that's come up as we've discussed this with the Zoning Hearing Board and with the Planning Commission. The latter phases are going to consist of the construction of the amphitheater as well as a uh, construction of the library annex. So uh, even though we're here tonight to uh, hopefully secure approval for the entire project, it is going to be phased and phase one is going to deal with the museum associated improvements. Uh, this project I know and Council's aware has been in the pipeline for uh, quite a while, well in excess of a year. We appeared in front of the Zoning Hearing Board and were fortunate enough to receive a number of variances back in July. And we appeared in front of uh, the Planning Commission in December and received unanimous recommended approval. Uh, I know our engineer, Sean Torpy uh, from Pannoni, has been in regular dialogue with uh, Kurt and Amanda. And uh, I think we've, we really have a, a pretty clean review letter from Gilmore & Associates tonight. And, We've worked pretty diligently to address the uh, outstanding issues. Uh, I will state that Grundy Foundation, and speaking with the director, they really view themselves as partners uh, in the community here. Unlike some you know, private clients, everyone looks at this and is trying to do something that's good for the community. But this is really geared towards truly public improvements that we think are going to be a benefit to the residents. And it's really going to continue uh, the borough's efforts to kind of beautify this area of the borough. And I think that's, if you look at it, it's really depicted on the rendering that we have here, the, the investment that we're uh, trying to make to the community. So, um, you know, we're, we're hopeful uh, that the borough uh, continues to work with us. We've been really excited about the borough's efforts to date. We appreciate your support. Everyone's been great to deal with. And uh, we're excited to uh, get going on this as soon as possible. So we have six waivers. Um, I'm more than happy to, to go through the waivers and why we feel, feel that they're warranted here. Uh, whatever council's um, you know, plan is, we're happy to address it. Or we can address questions specifically oriented to the project. Um, for the plan. So with that, I'll, I'll turn it over to you all and, and thank you for your consideration does, tonight. Does anybody have any questions on the waivers they're requesting? Kurt, we have no problems with the waivers that they're requesting. Is in that we support them. You support them? Ralph, can I? I just want to ask Mike. Mike, can you just briefly uh, let council know what efforts the foundation and Gene went to to reach out to his neighbors before he even proceeded with this plan? Yeah, and uh, Bob, you can address this too, but we've been, you know, everyone knows Gene. Uh, this has been, what, two two years probably of dialogue? A year and a half. Yeah, a year and a half where um, I know Gene has uh, had discussions with really everybody that he can in the community about this, all of the surrounding property owners. We volunteered to have conversations with some residents who came to the Zoning Hearing Board uh, to voice their opinion. I mean, we've been fortunate that everyone has been pretty supportive, but even the uh, residents who've had some questions, I know Gene has made himself available uh, whenever he could to address any of the concerns. Uh, so. Uh, you know, if Gene was here tonight, I, I'm sure he would have affirmed that to the borough, and I know he wanted to be here tonight, and he's, he's uh, said that he can't be present for medical reasons, but he's, he's really gone out of his way to include everybody in the community with this uh, discussion about this project and what we're intending to um, construct here. So. Yeah, Gene did send out letters to all the neighbors, and uh, they were going to have a uh, Function at the library, but because of COVID, couldn't. But they did have a Zoom meeting and invited everybody to Zoom. Meeting. Yeah. Again, our, our concern is always the people that live right across the street. Mm -hmm. I know Betty and Michael has a major concern with that, and I think it's been worked out with all the neighbors. Like you said, with COVID, it's very hard. But I know that 
you know, was a concern of theirs as the council. And also Mr. Gatrochi lives directly next to that, yes. that building. So, if, I mean, he's happy with it and he's got to deal with some of this. But I think when it's done, it's going to be like a college campus. I mean, you know, it's going to be gorgeous. And they're putting $11 million into that, that building to make this town a lot better. So uh, yeah. hopefully council approves this tonight and we move forward. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions? Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you very but much. You don't have to wait around if you don't want. It could be another hour or more. All right. Well, we appreciate your consideration. I know you're on a clock. We want to save the library some money. <laughs> That's right. That's right. <laughs> Gene We've a discounted rate. Gene will thank me tomorrow. <laughs> thank, thank you again. Have a great you're night. Welcome. Is that their easel? No, I think it was here. It was here? Okay, we're all just, we're still in, the meeting's still on. I gotta get my glasses. So, just on the way home. Good evening, Council. Chris Chapman, East Ward. Just about all of you know me. I your address, Chris. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm a little, my voice is a little rough from uh, opening day of flag football yesterday, so bear with me, please. Um, first off, I'd like to thank uh, Councilman Devine for all his help this year with us setting up our flag football. Uh, last time we had it, we had 12 teams, roughly 80 kids. Um, actually, some of the council members sponsored teams, Lou, uh, Greg. <coughs> Excuse me. This year, the number almost doubled. We've got 140-some kids and 40 cheerleaders. So it's been uh, pretty intense. Uh, but we've had some good people step up. Uh, we were lining the fields ourselves, uh, and officiating it. Uh, excuse me, and officiating them um, ourselves. So uh, you know, it was pretty chaotic. But some good people stepped up this year. We have a group that are lining the fields for us now at no cost, and uh, we are also we also have uh, officials for every game. So it's really making it work much better. We're trying to keep the kids and the parents to park better because we know. The amount of kids and parents that are there, it's kind of congested on Trenton Avenue. So we're really working on trying to get them to park spread out down Trenton Avenue so they're not all bunched up behind the high school. Um, with that being said, like I said, most of you know me. I'm the president and founding member of the uh, Bristol Wildcats Youth Football Program. Started eight years ago here in Bristol Borough. One team, 16 kids. In eight years, we've grown into five teams, 
cheerleaders. <coughs> Excuse me. We've added in flag football, and uh, the program just keeps growing. It's over and over, more and more kids. Uh, some of the local programs are actually dropping out. I noticed the Bristol Ward Dogs are having problems with their field. Um, so they're actually not even competing in our league anymore. Uh, we don't want to turn kids away, but we're also not taking everybody else's kids. So I actually did recommend to a lot of them to go to Croydon. It's still the township. They're still township kids. Uh, and it'll help Croydon's program too. Croydon restarted their program. Uh, Marsville now joined our league. In this area, all of the uh, local towns are coming back together to youth football, which is really making it great. It's very competitive. We hardly travel into the city anymore. We might go right up the boulevard, which is great. Um, so with that being said, I just, um, I want to announce tonight uh, our biggest plan that we've been working on for roughly two years. Most of the board members that I work with think I'm crazy, which is okay, because I can be at times when it comes to the kids. Uh, I very much believe in them. I believe they're all good. They just need, uh, they need things to do. And recreation has been lacked in Bristol Borough very much in the last 10 years, almost to the point where it's gone away. I mean, my son played Little League Baseball, and I fully support Little League. I believe all the kids should be playing Little League. When we were young, Everybody knows there was so many teams right here in the borough. We didn't have to compete with Croydon, Levittown, Falls Township, but now all our kids are disappearing. I think Little League needs a, they need help. They really need help. I mean, anybody has been down there with kids, you've been down there for your grandkid. I see you down there. Um, you know the bathrooms, they're shambling. They're constantly backed up or they don't work. It's just a mess. So it would really be nice to see uh, the Recreation Council or whatever step up and really help Little League a little more. Um, I know you guys are doing a lot of work to the fields, which is coming out nice. Uh, and baseball, like I said, is something that all the kids should be playing, besides all the other sports. We worked with Stacy. We've talked to her back and forth to try to make sure our flag football didn't interfere. Certain coaches were coaching on certain days, and certain kids had practice, too. So we had our coaches change their practice days so that it would not affect Little League baseball at all, um, which I thought was very big of my coaches to step up and do that, knowing that, you know, you just understand how it is with a coach. Nobody gets paid. It's all volunteer. So um, with that being said, I wanted to make a very big announcement tonight that we've been waiting on. Uh, the newspaper is going to break the story in a day or two, but we wanted to uh, come here first because I'd say the whole town pretty much watches these meetings. So uh, with the, for a better word, I guess lack of recreation, um, what we've done is we are opening a rec center in Bristol Borough. Uh, with the COVID situation, everybody understands how it is. It's crazy right now. But I would say probably inside the next two months, to see how things go, uh, we should be about ready to open. It's right here in Bristol Borough. We're going to include all sports year-round. Basketball, indoor soccer, anything the kids want to do, we're going to have. We are also, three of us that sit on the board are renewing our member, excuse me, our mentoring licenses. I've done it for four years out of FDR. Now I'm going to do it here in the borough. Uh, two other people are stepping up and also getting their credentials straightened out. So we're going to have a mentoring program there. <clears throat> we have a couple of local teachers that are, that are going to help us with our student athletes. All right? Some of them have, you know, a little, maybe a little laxed. Uh, they need a little help with school grades. They can come there and get free tutoring for an hour. Uh, we're adding in crafts. Where, where is it going to be, you guys? Where in the borough is this going to be? It's right behind the Little Wawa, uh, Calvary Church. If you look behind there, there's a red metal building. Yeah. It's a full gym. It includes a full kitchen, full bathroom facilities, mm -hmm. full everything. So we have parents that are going to do crafts at night with kids for certain groups. Uh, we have one that's going to do cooking. Uh, we have all different things. We have a couple of local construction guys that want to come in and start teaching kids about tools. Now, we're not going to give them power of tools and say, go ahead and try it out. But just different things to break up 
for me, what started out as sports, for me, it was all sports, sports, sports. But I've realized over the years, a lot of kids don't play sports or different sports, or we needed more for them. So a couple of parents approached me, wanted to be more involved. So I said, after seeing that gym sit there for so long, I started approaching the church and say, hey, listen, we would like to use that. My board thought it was crazy because already what we have under our belt keeps us busy pretty much year round. Um, but they agreed and they said, let's try. So the church has been very, very uh, open to working with us. And uh, like I said, once the COVID situation dies down, we'll be fully open. It will be open free of charge to all Bristol Borough um, families too. We put in adult stuff for the parents too, excuse me, to be more involved. Um, so we're working really hard to make this rec center uh, very, very positive for the entire um, community. And, you know, we would never have a problem with anyone stopping in, speaking to kids. I mean, anything that's going to be better for the kids, that's all we want. That's all we want. I worked tirelessly for eight years. I'll give 10 more years or until I can't get up anymore. But right. they keep me young, so I can still move with them for the most part. Uh, but again, I wanted to thank Mr. Devine because we were – um, this year, with the amount of kids that came out for flag football, we were overwhelmed, and he was able to point us in the right direction for people that said, you know what, yes, I'll sponsor a team. Yes, I'll sponsor a team. So, um, again, thank you, Councilman. Chapman, I don't, I'm not running this. I'm not running in this race, so <laughs> I want to thank you, dude. What you're doing really is, dude, it's awesome, dude. It really is, because it's about the kids. It's it kids first. You never got anything as much as you come in front of this council, and you've never been able to get anything. So hopefully, you know, people start to open their eyes and see what's really going on, what they we are. need to do. They are. Let me ask you a question, yes. Mr. Chapman. First of all, I, I thank you for everything you do. You run a first-class program. Thank you, Mr. Councilman. I think that the football is outstanding. I'm very glad to hear you're now going to run a rec center. But, you know, I didn't think you came here tonight about politics. I think you came here tonight to explain what you want to do for kids. So maybe I'm, Mr. Devine saying it's about people opening their eyes. And that just, to me, everything you said tonight really diminished a lot of that. But well, I again, think I appreciate everything you do. Thank you. I appreciate that. I'm sure the council does. So, I mean, well, I think what he was actually, I think what he's saying is when he says more people opening their eyes, just seeing that. Yes, we need to invest in recreation. Yes. We right. need Thank to, um, we really do need to make a big, a big change in Bristol Borough. And we can do it. It's simple because I was really You're overwhelmed. Doing it. You're at, doing it. Well, I'm trying to. I'm trying to. I give you know, credit. So. Well, I mean, I've asked council for support many times. I've directly asked my council representatives, that, but for some reason they say no um, well, year after year after year. So. Again, I mean, I understand everybody has their own personal feelings, but you can't make it about me. If you don't like me, that's fine, but you got to like what we're doing. I mean, when you have 150 to 200 kids, if, uh, at no matter what we're doing, and still growing. I Are mean, they all playing for nothing, or do they pay? No, no. For certain sports, of course, it costs money okay. because we provide uniforms, uh, equipment, but anything that we can make dirt cheap. Uh, we do. Like our flag football program is the cheapest in Bucks County, upper and lower, you name it. We made it the cheapest. Uh, I have a great rapport with the sporting goods uh, company that we use and we've used for 10 years now. Um, we have good companies that have helped us uh, with equipment. I mean, football helmets, of course. Football season, biggest cost. I mean, figure for yourself, we got 125 kids playing football. These helmets are good for two years then you either have to recertify them or get new ones. So right. the difference in the cost of money, it, for us, is better to buy the new helmets. So we found good sponsors that you know help us across the board. But again, I appreciate your time. I wanted everybody to know what's going on. Um, like I said, there's a nice story coming out. There's some other things coming out. And we're going to actually have a town-wide celebration. We're going to invite the whole town to come out, see the center, see what we've done to it. Um, again, I have to thank some of the construction guys in town because 
quickly, in that rec center, it was a cement floor. You could still play basketball on it, but when a couple of them heard what we were doing, they actually stepped up, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, they actually uh, stepped up and offered to put in a hardwood basketball floor. Awesome. I was uh, pretty overwhelmed. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, again, you know, I just wanted to take a little bit of your time. I see you're very busy. I, and I also thought it was great to see Century 21 and you guys discussing some recreation options and stuff. It'll be really good. I don't know much about the recreation, but I'm trying to pay attention more. But, you know, we kind of got my hands full and a lot of other things. But, again, thank you for your time, everybody, and I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you for everything you do. I appreciate it, guys. Good night. Good evening, everybody. Your name, address, and uh, my name is Sam Scalzo. I'm at 524 Adam Street. Um, thanks, everybody, for your service to the community. I greatly appreciate it. Um, so, three things I want to talk about tonight. First thing, um, I notice when I walk my dog, there's still some places where the trash cans aren't replaced from the springtime. I was wondering if there's a timeline when they'll be back, or if we could potentially add more if some were, uh, you know. Road Where do you walk? The at the um, behind Lennox. Yeah, like uh, behind Lennox. They're they all get picked up in a winter and get brought back probably in the next couple weeks. Okay, great. And if and if if there's like um, if there's a way we could add like one more like behind like the football field like that uh, stretch of path there, you know, with, with all the everything going on, you know, I understand Barrow can only pick up the trash so often, so it just could help out. Picking up trash at least three days a week. Yeah. Plus weekends. Yeah, right and, and now, so. I could I can't tell you how many times a dog has picked up one of these. So right. it's I, I get it. Um, the other thing I want to talk about is um, some pedestrian safety issues I've seen throughout town. Just I've been jogging around here since I was a freshman. I'm now 30, um, and you know there's a couple ways that you know we can work to improve that. You know signage enforcement and also physical like. Uh, necking down like crosswalks, like um, you know, LBI at Angleside Avenue, um, and I see it down in the city. And I think a great um, area where that could happen is on Mill Street, where the parking, where you eliminate like a parking spot or two at the intersection. So instead of crossing the whole width of Mill Street, you know, you're only you know crossing like 14, 16 feet, however wide Mill Street is. Um, and I'm not sure if the borough has attempted to uh, pursue any funding, but I know there is a um, funding through PennDOT. I think it's Title 75 um, funding that can be um, looked into. I just wanted to throw it out there because, I mean, I'm, I'm guilty of the Bristol roll just as much as anybody else here. And there's some, there's some hot spots. I can't tell you how many times I stand on the corner of Mill and Old Route 13 trying to cross and someone's trying to make a right or red through that white checkered and, you know, I'm, I'm throwing up my hands and, you know, me versus a car, I can only jump so high. Um, and then another bad spot is that Wawa and uh, Farragut Avenue with the uh, you know, path crossing right there. You know, like there's a sign like in front of the library, like maybe just get another yield to pedestrian sign there. So just something to look into. Um, then the third thing I wanted to talk about, something that I wake up to every morning, and it's the construction of Mill Run. Um, you know, it's been going on for how many years now? Too many. Long yeah. time. I moved into my house in May 2016, or December 2016. I wake up to it every morning. For the past three months or so, I've noticed Mr. White there more frequently, monitoring, I guess, what's going on. But I still see one guy, two guys working there, so they just don't seem very motivated. There's construction debris out there from when they pulled conduit, there's scaffolding laid down there, there's bricks, uh, not bricks, uh, like foundation block just sitting down there. You know, I wake up to it every morning. There's a tractor trailer that's been there for how many years? It's, you know, it's supposed to be a temporary condition, temporary construction site, but, you know, they're just taking their, their time. Is there a way as a town that we can 
kind of keep them accountable, keep them on a schedule. I don't know how the tax dollars are tied into it, or I think the term was, uh, was it the LERDA? So just so you know, they, they are paying taxes. Right. Uh, there's nobody that could force them to work any faster. Mrs. Cullen called a meeting with them about a month ago or more. <coughs> Uh, the, the whole team came in and they tell you the same thing they're telling every other time there was a meeting that they're going to be completed by the summer, which none of us believe. Uh, you know, the only thing we could do as a borough is tell them to clean up the outside, which we're hoping this summer they did all the shrubbery, the planting, yeah, that nice. the outside starts looking a lot better. Uh, but besides that, I mean, it's like if you fixed your house and it took you. 10 years to fix it and you're working on it, we can't come in and say, you know, you got to have it completed by this date. Right. The, the building's been transferred to them, so they do own the building. Am I correct, Mr. Salerno? Correct. Right. Gotcha. So, and it's on the tax roll, so the school district and the borough and the county is now receiving tax money. Oh, that's good. But, you know, we feel your pain. I mean, Lorraine and Greg deal with this constant. Right. They deal with the constituents saying, what the hell is going on? Yeah, until like a, two weeks ago, there was a, you know, an RV in shambles just sitting there. Right. And finally that kind of stuff, we can do something. Right. And you know, there's no question. I mean, that's what this meeting was about, keeping the place clean. As far as the inside, there, there's no, I don't know how you could force anybody to finish. Um, All right. Can, oh, go ahead. I just want to say something. Um, Bob White assured us that uh, he was going to keep the area, you know, clean. So just keep an eye on it. Give me a call. I'll call him immediately. Um, he su they're supposed to hire someone to water the plants and do all that stuff. That's what he told us. Um, they put a lot of money in this place. Yes, I mean, and you know, I think you invest in so much money, I you know. want to open it up. I, I agree. Opens up, anyone starts a business, they want to open up so they can start you know, taking in money. I totally agree with you. And, and uh, at the last meeting, I was really angry, and I said some things probably that I shouldn't have said. doesn't matter. I mean, I hate to tell you, but they're tough. They're yeah. a very tough group of people. That's all I can say. Right. Mr. Devine. Yeah, there's just a couple of things I would like to ask. I mean, when you say there's nothing that we could do, I remember quite vividly when the opportunity come and they had a, they had a, we had to reinstate their LERDA, which our solicitor said that we never, they never had a LERDA, but we all voted for it as a council the first time to go through it, and we were promised those things a while ago. And I remember sitting at this meeting and saying, well. They asked me, well, what do you want them to do? I said, well, what are our choices? The reason we gave them alert is for them to get done their job to give them a break and to work together, both of us together, so we, we would make a compromise. But what happened was that murder fell through. Then our solicitor acted like it was never a murder. And now when I said, well, let's hold them accountable, let's not give them a murder and let's do it if that's our building. Let's force them to, to move. But nobody agreed to that. That is exactly true, no, Solicitor. Yes, sir. Yes. Right. I'm not going to get into it's this. It's not. I'm just saying. These, just these, are, these are the things that just happen. Just explain something to you. All right. You know, I'm still talking, if you don't mind. If you don't mind. It, it doesn't. Mr. Mayor, I don't know why you don't understand the idea. Just because just he's the president. Let Mr. Devine finish. Does it mean when I, somebody has the foot or able to finish? I, I, finish. I understand you, you like to chime in. And I don't know why they don't ever hit you with the gavel, but you chime in all the time. All right. Does you ever get that? Give you a little bit. All right. So anyway, Mr. Scal's up. So the, the other part of it is this. So I have a question for counsel. So we have two very prominent Bristol Borough people that are on the RDA, right? That's Mr. DiGiuseppe and Mr. Pettit. So they, they should know way more than they're telling us of what is going on with that property. So maybe Mr. DiGiuseppe, you can let us know and be open. What is it that's going on? Why is Mr. White over there? Isn't he retired? What purpose does Mr. White have over at the I have no idea. You have no idea. He's not on the RDA anymore. Right, but you are. So why is he over there? It has nothing to do with the property. 
Okay, I'm they just wondering why would he be over there is what I'm saying. All right, let me just say, son, so yeah. I'm not going to get into this because it's just going to take up too much of my time. Okay. Mr. Devine does not understand the alert. And not to sit not here again alert. tonight. It's alert. To sit here tonight and explain the whole process with the alert is just a waste of my time and everybody else's. So if you want to listen to what he has to say, that's fine. Simple process. If you want to listen to what I have to say, that's fine. Mr. Uh, Kurt, do you just want to explain what's going on with the project? Well, Briefly, we're, please, because I'm not going to sit here all night and discuss this. Yeah, well, we're involved in the site work, obviously. We don't get involved in the interior work. The building code officials are handling that. But the site work, as everyone's seen, has moved, progressed very slowly. I mean, the encouraging thing is, is that it's still moving. You know, projects that stop is always worse. I know it seems terrible with the slowness that is existing now, but uh, they're at least making some, some progress. saying that the site work is the portion we're involved with and um, it's moving slowly but they're at least making some progress I mean almost weekly we're corresponding with their team and they're trying to move things forward uh, making minor adjustments to their plan you know they're well aware of some of the issues particularly on Adams Street that they've said they're going to fix and we have financial security to ensure that they do um, but there's not much more leverage that we have other than to just keep trying to be persistent and work with them as we in the borough have done uh, over the past several months. Thanks, Several Kurt. years. Years. Anything else, Sam? Yeah, so, you know, I know I wasn't around during the approval process, but I do understand I was at one meeting where, um, you know, there's a lot of discussion about parking and how it's under parked. So, as the facility opens up and that band-aid is ripped off and you know, we, we'll probably see the you know the parking problems as a community if you know if we could plant the bug in their ear to have some sort of community community advocate or somebody is a direct line of communication so if problems do arise when the facility com becomes operational just to have that line of communication so we don't have to you know come to council and say, oh, they're parking in my spot. I think you know Mrs. Right. Collin good enough that you could contact her or Mr. Pezzi yeah. anytime there's an issue there. Yeah, so I'm just saying like something, you know, down the line, just plant the, plant right. the bug in the that's air. But fine. who knows how long it's going to be. So that's all I have for tonight. Anytime Thank you. you need to talk, you, j you have my number. Yep, no, I do. Because I've called you. Yep. So, so. anytime. Right. Thank you. That's it. Thank have a good you. night, everybody. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Anybody else out there, Merle? Is that it? One more, he's saying. Good Hi. I'm Ed Murphy. I'm here tonight on behalf of J.G. Petrucci. Um, I think everybody may recall that uh, last July is when we started this conversation with the borough staff about acquiring a portion of the Antonelli property and redeveloping it. So we've been working diligently for the last 10 months with the borough. Most recently met with your planning commission and what's on the easel is a plan that shows the retention of the existing Antonelli building, which is in that lighter brown color, uh, our new building, which is in the darker brown color, and part of what's in front of you is a subdivision as well as the land developments. Antonelli intends to keep their pro portion of the property where their building is on, and we would own the, build the rest of the property and build the building that you see there. Uh, one of the biggest issues that we've been dealing with from the very beginning, and the borough made it clear from the outset that uh, they would expect uh, applicants such as us to uh, reconstruct Hunter Road. So part of what we're doing, the plans reflected, is we are going to reconstruct the entire length of Hunter Road according to borough specs, and uh, Kurtz reviewed those plans. Uh, Mr. Salerno was kind enough today to share with me a draft of the approval resolution, which we've seen and commented back, so we're good to move ahead with that. We have no issue with any of 
Kurt's review comments or any other comments of the other borough consultants. So uh, we think we're in a point tonight where we're good to move ahead, and we're here tonight to seek preliminary and final subdivision and land development approval consistent with that draft of the approval resolution. Just so everybody understands, this is 100,000 square feet. The Antonelli building is plus or minus 58,000. Our building is about 158,000. So 158,000. Right, plus or minus, right. So it's a great project for the borough. It's going to bring in a lot of taxes to the borough and to the school board. Uh, Mrs. Collin reviewed this with our solicitor, and we were at several meetings. Mr. Peza looked at this since it's in their ward. Uh, the biggest concern everybody had was the road. Right because the tractor trailers that drive on that road, we don't know how long it's gonna last. And uh, both council people from that ward did not wanna put that on the taxpayers. We didn't feel that the, the taxes we will receive would outweigh this road. I mean, every five years it may have to get redone. So until that this approval tonight is based on approving everything, and working out an agreement on the road. Right, and we've talked to our neighbors that also share access to the road and everybody's in agreement with moving ahead as we've discussed tonight. All right. And everybody's gonna pitch in cooperatively to pay for the reconstruction of the road. According to Kurt Specs, so hopefully we get a good road put in for many years. You're gonna plow it, you're gonna plow it, you're gonna maintain it. Yep. It's gonna take the borough completely out of this. Correct. That's exactly what Lorraine and Greg that was concerned about. Accurate. So right. it, it went on for a while until we can get this resolved. So yep. I just wanna thank both of them for working very hard on disagreement with our solicitor. So does anybody else have any questions? Tony? Yeah, two things. Is there a way, Kurt, you can point to where that road is? I don't even know what I'm looking at. Green lane. Green lane. Oh, okay. And it wraps around all the tracks, the lumberman properties in the back. Oh, okay. And the proposed building. And then what are you guys going to do with that? What's that building for? Uh, to be determined, but it's, it's a warehouse. Just warehousing stuff? Yeah, it's or not it? manufacturing. Oh, okay. Right now, we think it's just going to be a straight warehousing operation. That's it. Thank you. So when you say warehouse, uh, products are going to come in, then you're going to redistribute them, and products will go out of that warehouse? So it's a distribution center? Could be, right. Okay. Any other questions? All right. Thank you. It'll be on our agenda tonight. Oh, you don't do it right now? <laughs> oh, no. Sorry. <laughs> okay. It's going to be a while, so there's no sense. Okay, good. Thanks. Bill will get in touch with you tomorrow. All right, good deal. Unless you guys want to wait around. Nope. <laughs> so that ends uh, public participation and all our engineers and uh, everybody who's here this evening. Yeah, I just have two things. Um, well, Mr. Dillon, thank you and Stephen Everett for taking care of uh, what I had asked for last year on House Street. I know with everything that's going on, it took a, a little while, but the neighbors in that area are very satisfied with the new parking areas that they're able to get. And we also have um, a request from, I, I guess I shouldn't really say their name, but anyway, they wanted a sidewalk built. They have a special needs child. And I was talking to Michael and we were thinking that we would ask Mr. Dillon, if he can apply for a community a community development application grant that might help the situation because it, it's too much in that area for us to do on the taxpayers. So after me and Michael spoke about it, we thought, you know, if Mr. Dillon would look into it for us, we'd appreciate it. And that's all I have. Go. Yeah, I've got a couple things. Under the uh, police, last month, we had um, 877 calls for service during the month. That's somewhat of an uptick from the previous month, about 200 calls. Seems like we're averaging about 800 calls a month so far this year. Um, DEA drug take back this Saturday from 10 to 2. 
downstairs, out front, and also we're, we're going to have a, uh, an officer over in Grundy Towers uh, for that, too. That's this Saturday from 10 to 2. Um, have a traffic complaint in Green Lane, working through Councilwoman Collins since February. Uh, 15 details have conducted 27 traffic stops and 17 citations have been issued uh, on Green Lane. Traffic details also conducted on Otter and Maple Street. Uh, stop sign there by where the, uh, the playground is. With seeing the, an increase of people in the playground with COVID easing up a little bit. More people are coming out. And speed on Route 13, also Pond Street. We have a need for an additional substitute crossing guard. Just had another one resign. Um, officers' monthly training includes implicit bias training. Um, the chief has been uh, focusing on de-escalation training and now uh, implicit bias training. John Libel, part-time officer, is on the uh, docket for tonight. Former Philadelphia uh, Police Department, replacing Officer Heller, who took a full-time position with Middletown. Um, I know I've heard from most of the council people here, quads, motorcycles, mm -hmm. extremely challenging. Asking for the public's cooperation. Forward photos or videos to the police department. If you know the addresses where the viral violators reside, notify us, and you can remain anonymous. Uh, I don't know if you've been watching the news at nighttime, but it's not just Philadelphia. It seems like it's all over every town here in the United States seem to be having a problem with uh, these young people. Some of them really young. Uh, I saw one the other day. didn't look like it was more than 12 years old. So if you can, take a picture. Maybe we can uh, identify some of these people. And parents, I don't know why you're buying kids quads and motorcycles. You can't ride them on a public street. With the fire department, we had a fire board meeting back on uh, March 30th. Um, four fire companies that have formed the committee for restructuring, they held a meeting on March the 20th. Uh, I attended that meeting. Responses for the month of March, there were 20 fire-related uh, emergencies, 20 medical-related emergencies. With out-of-town rescue squads, there were nine. Uh, the 20 EMS responses, there were five respiratory distress, three cardiac arrests, and three overdose cardiac arrests, uh, two emergency transportations and seven other uh, medical emergencies. The um, Fire Department Restructuring Organization Committee, they, as I said, they've been meeting. They met on March 20th. They just met again uh, last weekend to uh, kick off. I had mentioned that they were hiring a, um, a gentleman to come in as a consultant who has done this restructuring. And in the uh, state assessment was done, the first thing that was suggested was that the fire companies form a fire association, combining all the companies under one, let's say, let's call it the Bristol Borough Fire Association. Uh, he's going to come in. All the fire companies have each donated $2,500. Uh, they've talked to the uh, consultant. They asked him to work within that. If not, I'm not asking for council to, to do anything tonight. But if it goes over 10000 they would like to come before the council and, and maybe ask council to help them out what's over 10000 But they're not entering into anything other than what they, they currently have. Uh, assignments to committees to prepare mission statements, strategic planning for staff, staffing, apparatus, uh, training, and overall organization and financing. I think they're doing a hell of a job. I just want to compliment uh, Steve Rees, he's a deputy chief downstairs. Uh, he's stepped up. He's being the uh, guy that's putting these meetings together and guiding, you know, giving direction uh, to the committee. Um, COVID-19 numbers are increasing despite the vaccination efforts in PA. This is from our EMA manager, Merle. Um, Grundy Towers alarm system, voice notification system to be updated to advise residents to remain in their rooms until the fire department comes to evacuate them. When we had the fire, we found that there was a, a little bit of a challenge with the uh, current 
uh, announcement that was being used. And uh, I think that's just about it. That's it. Thanks, uh, Moran. I'm sorry. I know you might have to get out of here. So. Okay. Sorry about I, that. I was just, just talking to my sister. Everything's okay right now. But um, can I go now? Yeah? Okay. Um, I was speaking to Mr. Dillon today about Taft Street. Uh, Mr. Voroshak, I spoke to him uh, last night, and the speeding around the curve on Taft Street is really bad. They want to slow down children at play sign. So we, we will probably call Kevin. Well, we're going to talk to Kevin Everett. He's away right now, and we're going to meet there next week to decide where we're going to put this, these signs. Um, also, it was brought to my attention yesterday by Ed Tosti. He, um, he sent me an email, and he said that there's a feral cat problem in Harriman. Uh, this is the first I, was he I heard about it, and um, I wanted to ask Mr. Dillon what, what's going on with that. Uh, if I could ask the chief to come in, because he's been working on this uh, with our animal control officer. It's uh, really uh, disturbing the neighborhood uh, up in that area, and it's a very difficult uh, problem how to address it, especially when you have a, one of the neighbors feeding all the cats up there. Mm. So that's got to stop somewhere along the line if this problem is going to get resolved. But the chief is uh, really taking this uh, problem and has been working with our a AOC, I mean, animal control officer. <laughs> i got the uh, recreation authority, <laughs> too. So apparently, I've got an education on it, to be very truthful with you. Um, there's a lot of challenges involving that, and it's a true problem to the, to the people that live up there. So we're doing the best we can, but we have some true hurdles to go over. First of all, the ASPCA will not accept feral cats, and they will not euthanize them. There's a volunteer spading and neutering program in town, which I'm some of you are already aware of, that has um, been in existence and is trying to help us out with this. Right. The issue is the relocation, which nobody really wants to hear the answer to that, because actually it's about cat colonies and about the male cat, and um, if you remove the one cat, then you have the visiting cats from Edgley that come down and take over. <laughs> it's like the oh jets and the God. sharks. It's unbelievable. So. Um, the strategy that is proposed by the experts to us is you have to basically capture the entire colony, which is quite a, um, a task in itself. You spade and neuter the entire colony. Now, we need to get the public to help us out and stop being the food source, and that's what's going on up there. People are feeding these cats. So once we stop the food supply, the colony will naturally reduce itself. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to uh, pretty much um, expand our ACO program, get a little bit of help from other people, and we're going to work on capturing the entire colony. Uh, we have to house the cats until you catch the entire colony. So I think there's like nine or, nine or 11 of them there now. You can't just do half and then let them out. It doesn't work that way. All, this is all my new education. Upon them all being captured, then we have to neuter them or spade them, whatever happens. We have to house them. And then um, for, until they could be released for several hours. The biggest thing about this is this colony, if we just remove that colony, another colony is coming in. So we, it's just a territory thing, which is being explained to me. I've removed gang activity much easier than this. Um, so what I'm saying is we really do. And there's the one big problem up there is the people feeding the feral cats. So we're going to do what we can on our end the best we can. We're going to start trapping this week. And then we're going to start working out with them. Um, can, can I ask you a question? Will you keep me posted on this? Because um, it, you know, it's my ward, and I just this is the first I'm hearing of it, and I, I want to I want to keep abreast of it, okay? And I, I, you, you're good like that, so you know, I know you'll do it. Thank you. Okay, now it's my turn. I have about 15 of them. Feral cats on my porch in my yard. You have a name? I reported him. John Miller been out three or four times. 
My wife already bought three sets of new pillows for our porch furniture. So when we start trapping, I'll talk to you after the meeting. I would love to start trapping the cats that's around my house. Yeah, uh, sure. And I'll, tell you, I'll give you the address and the guy that's feeding them and he's going to do what he wants. So. Is there anything that can be I done about that? Mer I talked to licensing inspection today and they cannot prevent it. They can't no, do anything. There's no warning that presents us or no. But my wife will be very happy. <laughs> no. well, I'll talk to you after the meeting. Just doing the best I can. I didn't tell you. Not I go. I'm just going to be very what? upset. I didn't tell you about the cats on my porch. What about if somebody feeds like um, skunks and stuff like? Because I know someone that did this. <laughs> oh, no, Can't do anything true. about that. Why are we talking to our chief of police about cats and skunks? That's Mr. Probably. Devine, am I talking? You're no, not. I'm <laughs> Excuse me. All right, I apologize. I have no idea. Okay. All Thanks, right. Chief. Uh, Lorraine, you done? I'm sorry. Um, I have spoken about anything I wanted to talk about for everything. I'm good. Thanks, Chief. Thank you. Well, what do you have? Um, just, you, just in case you have to leave. Guys. Actually, one, thing, one thing I didn't cover and I forgot to put on the report because I did get a call from Stacy Drag. We are taking efforts also by the ball field. It happens every time this year. We get coming across 13 large groups and going on like that. I understand the parents have their concern. We had foot patrols out last Friday night. Of course, the weather wasn't, um, well, I guess it was cooperative. I've talked to the, the manager of the, the pizza parlor up there and stuff. So we are addressing. We have direct patrol up there. We're going to try to do a little bit more foot patrols and stuff. If it's possible, we have the two stop signs that are blinking coming up Jefferson. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe, Jim, we can get two stop signs going the other way, blinking, so the car is coming from 13 and coming around, heading into down Jefferson can uh, be spotted a lot easier. I think if yeah, we those can, signs are great. I would like to put two more of them in. Yeah, they're, they're definitely a help to the pedestrian. Thanks. Thank you. So I don't know if we can go out of order and vote on these agenda items, just in case Lorraine has to leave. Has anybody got a problem with that? No. So if you go to our agenda, and I'll go back to Mayor's Community Public. Let's go to number three on the agenda. All right. I'd like to make a motion to adopt the resolution for preliminary final subdivision land development for Grunty Foundation, 680 Rackler Street, which expires date 5521. And the motion is for the consolidation of several tax parcels, the construction of 5,580 square feet, addition to the existing library and outdoor restroom building, and walkway and two storm water basins, all in accordance with the conditions set forth in the attached more detailed resolution which has been reviewed and approved on behalf of the applicant. So I'm totally confused. So you have the... Uh, Betty made the motion on... And Louis, um, Louis second. seconded it. Yes. Any questions or comments? All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? So all my agenda, number three, is to accept the council okay. minutes. So why don't we go back to three? Mr. President, I'd like to make a motion to accept the council meeting minutes for March 8, 2021, to accept the treasurer's report for February 2021, to accept the police department report for March 2021 to accept the fire chief's report for March 2021 to expect accept the inspector's report for uh, March 2021 and to accept the harb report for January, February, and March of 2021. Second by Ms. Rodriguez. Questions or comments? All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Number four. Mr. President, I'd like to make a motion to authorize the hiring of part-time police officer John Leibel to yes. replace Officer Heller. Second. Second. Questions or comments? I think Officer Heller, I'm very disappointed that he's leaving. I think he was one of, one of our better uh, police officers. I agree. And if someday we ever give the civil service test, I would love to see him come back to Bristol. That's good. 
All in favor? Aye. 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 Sorry, I I'm number up. six. Uh, I messed up because I read, I looked at the wrong page and read that already. Oh, I got six. Is that okay? Ahead. All right. A motion. I would like to make a motion to adopt a resolution to approve the preliminary final land development and subdivision plan for JERC Partners LXX LLC for 2201 Hunter Road for the subdivision of the property into two parcels for the construction of a warehouse building, all in accordance with the conditions set forth in the attached uh, more detailed resolution, which has been, re been received and approved on behalf of the application. Second by Mr. Petrucci. Questions or comments? All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Number seven. I'd like to make a motion to authorize the engineer to proceed with design and engineering services for improvements to Mill Street parking lot per Gilmore, Gilmore letter dated March 24, 2021. Dave? Yeah, just real quick, well, I got Kurt here. Kurt, I know it's just, uh, you know, going to paving the parking lot and the storm drains on, on the initial thing, but please don't forget to... Uh, Kayakers and the canoers on that point. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions or comments? Just so you know, on that grant, that right now we got a possibility of getting another million dollars to match that. <laughs> so I'm working on that along with a couple of talk when it's my turn. Any Thank other you. questions or comments? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, so let's go back to our, just in case Lorraine has to leave. And, Make sure there was enough people here. Michael. Uh, yes, just a couple things. Thank you. Um, as it's been mentioned through the night, it's great to see that people are out. Of course, get vaccinated. Even though you are vaccinated, still wear your mask. Go clean your hands. Don't let your guard down. You've yeah. come so far. Just keep that up. Uh, you know. So, just wanted to mention that. Just a. I'm sure you're all aware of it, but sometimes the. Just mention it again. Um, also, uh, just to mention, there's a lot of activity going on in Mill Street. It's buzzing, which is cool. That's due to the facade program, everything going, you know, the buildings that are redoing, uh, some that are still in the process, there's more to come. I also like to welcome, uh, there are three new businesses and more coming, uh, which is good despite everything going on. Um, and uh, lastly, um, just to mention that on, uh, if you've seen anything about the mural, um, with Raising the Bar, uh, it was a thought to bring the art outside just because of all that's going on where you can't, you're limited to inside. There will be an unveiling on April 27th at 5.30 in that vicinity, and that more details will come. But just wanted to mention that. Thank you. Lily. Yes, I just, um, one, I wanted to thank Aqua Pennsylvania. I know they gave two grants to two of our fire companies and, and another grant to the uh, Township Fire Company. And uh, I'd like to thank President DiGiuseppe for working with Lower Bucks Hospital uh, when the uh, state announced that they were no longer going to give them vaccines and locals would have to go out to King of Prussia at that first point. Uh, he worked diligently with the uh, hospital and the local politicians to uh, to get that changed. Um, so Lower Bucks is still still doing vaccines. Uh, one of the problems was they were getting Johnson and Johnson, and now that's on a hold up. So I think they are back to uh, right. Pfizer. Pfizer. So thank you for your help with the hospital. Appreciate it. In one in one day. Wayne help, and uh, we're working with the county with Kim Ever. Uh, we got 800 people in a few hours to register for the shot. The hospital was totally ecstatic over the whole thing. They couldn't believe that we had that many people email them to get a shot within uh, a few hours. So they're working, you know, well with us. I want to thank 
Tina Davis and Brian Fitzpatrick and councilmen from the township who everybody's trying to keep this hospital going. So again, it's been a great effort from everyone to, to make. And Louie, thank you for uh, recognizing everything. Anything else? No, that's Mr. Gerard. Thank yes, thank you. Uh, a neighbor stopped me the other day, and uh, despite having a no tractor trailer sign at, at the beginning of the street, uh, continuing to have trouble with the tractor trailers come down there, uh, the idea of the uh, red light blinking caught uh, the neighbor's eye, and she, she asked me to bring it up at the uh, council meeting for uh, just a general discussion that maybe a, a blinking uh, yellow light on to accent that sign might be a good idea. And I, I, Are there still trucks coming down Jefferson? Uh, come, uh, she's complained about coming down Mansion Street and, oh, yeah. and, and mm -hmm. trying to make the turn on Corson. Yes. So, okay. Coming so. down. Coming down. The signs we put up right now, if we were out there, all the new signs, it says no left turn. <laughs> Are they still making the left? This, 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 this complaint was from, from Beaver turning on the okay. mansion and then going down the course and where it's a hard 90 degree turn. And it, uh, they've got to drive up. Mer Merle would know. It's right where he lives. And he spoke to Steve about that. He said it would have to be a red light like at the ball field. It's only because it's a stop sign there. But it, he said you could do it. Okay. All right. Well, okay. That's just an idea. I, I thought it was a decent idea, so I, I presented it. The other question I have is for uh, either or Mr. Uh, Dijerzep or Mr. Dillon. I see where Habitat for Humanity tore that house down on Plummins and Spruce Street, and then they have a sign up there coming soon, a new house. Uh, that lot's on. It looks to me that lot's only about 20 feet wide. Are they are they planning to put a house there on that empty lot? Do you, you know? I have no idea. You know, Jim. I believe they are. Yes. Um, they tear a house down, Dave? Yeah, they tore a house down. I'm sure they could put it back the same size house. It, it's right on the street, though. Street alley. Of, I mean, it's... I mean, I want to live here because people walking down that alley look right in your windows, you know. But anyhow, I was talking to the residents over there, a couple of residents, and, and they, what they need is parking. Uh, there, are, there are two empty lots on that same block in the middle of the street, that the big lots. Uh, I don't know who owns those. And there's also another lot on the other side of the railroad on the right-hand side that's a buildable lot. Uh, I, I thought we had to have 45 feet or if they, see there's no existing structure. I know sometimes they leave a wall up and they can rebuild to right. the wall where you don't have to have all these things. But when the house is gone, I don't. Do they, I, they're going to need variances. On a single home, you need 10 foot on each side. But, yeah, well that takes up a lot. 25 foot rear yard, 10 foot front yard. Yeah, well, so 10 maybe, feet on each side and it's got no property, so. Yeah. Okay, uh, just. I don't know, maybe call Sally tomorrow or okay. find right. out what's going on. Maybe it wasn't approved, they're applying. Yeah, I was wondering what the assignment coming soon. But anyhow, the people over there would love to have uh, some parking here, so, okay. That's all I got, thank you. I got a few things. Uh, just update council on a few things. Uh, one, Ratcliffe Court, everybody knows that my son is selling the houses over there. Right now it's over 50% sold out. They sold nine houses Saturday and Sunday. They sold over another building the weekend before. So that development is moving along very, very well. To be over 50% with the virus and, you know, COVID and everything that's going on, there's the houses are moving very well. So just wanted to give you an update on that. I went to, I mean. Excuse the, me, Ralph. Uh, Who's the builder over there? Is that McGrath's store? Yeah. Uh, McGrath isn't there anymore. Mm -hmm. Who is the builder? I don't know. Thank you. Uh, I went to the baseball field. Mr. Dillon, my, uh, my sister's funeral that day. I couldn't make it. But Mr. Dillon and Mr. Salerno met Verizon down at the baseball field, at the big hardball field. They put four stakes in, green stakes, to, for this tower. So before we give them approval, I'd like everybody tomorrow to take the time out of their day to go there and make sure you're happy with that. 
if we don't hear anybody opposing that tomorrow, then we're going to proceed. It's a lot smaller than I thought it would be. So the, the footprint that they're taking up. So we already voted on it to proceed to have it go to uh, the Planning Commission and everything else. Well, right? okay, so they, they have to go to zoning, but they don't want to do that till they have a lease with us. But let me say a couple of things. You're going to see the stakes. It's only 19 by 28. They cannot go further closer to the railroad because there's utilities in there and also because the railroad has an easement to, to, to use that to get back to towards the canal, okay? Um, so they can't do that. If you, if you notice where it's located, it's located pretty close to the parking lot and it's unlikely there's going to be any foul balls going in there because of the cage. If they moved it back, further back towards right field, and it's a tr it's a triangle. So if they move it back further, not only is it going to be closer to the to the uh, the ball field fence, but now foul balls might be able to get in there, and they're concerned about that. So this is the spot they it's the, we we've been doing this for six months. It's the best spot we can get without utility problems, et cetera, uh, and um, there will be a little. Uh, stone road from the parking lot to the to the uh, facility and um, no barbed wire and uh, and this is not going to happen until next year anyway but once we approve the location we can complete the lease at which point they know they have to go to zoning to get the use variance and they understand that so this is kind of the first step but if you guys can go out there and take a look at that it is a lot smaller than we imagined um, and the space is a lot larger than we thought. So, Louis, are the stakes the footprint of the tower, or is there a whole the whole yard that they're going to fence? The whole facility. The outside dimensions. Okay. Right. okay. Yeah, Mr. Slaughter, I know it's late in the game. Uh, I'm riding down 13 uh, to go to work, and I'm the, I'm noticing like naked cell towers, and I'm noticing tree cell towers. Mm -hmm. so it's really pretty cool. I, I know it's late in the game for us to be saying, hey, put a tree tower there, but uh, if that's at all possible... I guess well, the problem is it, the more expense we lay on them, the less they're going to give us. Okay. That's right. the problem. All right. Thank um, you. And again, if next month, if everybody says we're against this, then just tell them we don't want it. I mean, it doesn't matter to me either way, but like Dave said, somebody's going to put this tower up. So either we're going to collect so much a year and, and move on. If you want to bring them back again, anybody has any questions on the medical end of this, which we asked them before, they're going to tell you no, it's not harmful. But again, it's up to council. Yeah, is there somebody that we could bring in that isn't, you know, that, that wouldn't be represented from Verizon, like somebody? I think you got to research it online and, you know, see what, you know, what's involved with this. All right, so that's the other thing. If everybody noticed that Elm Street has now been taken down, mm -hmm. the only thing left this week, they're going to come in and grade it and hydroseed it. We're going to leave the fence up until we get green grass because if not, the kids are going to start riding through it and it's going to be harder to grow. I think it really looks nice if you look at that little footprint for the amount of houses that were there. It's amazing. Yeah. But uh, again, at one time it was a great street. A lot mm -hmm. of great people lived there. So, you get your okay, railing? Yeah, I yeah. appreciate it. Yeah. I made sure that the railing was there for you, Mr. Yeah, I appreciate that. They were super heavy, too. <laughs> That's real wrought iron. That was not like tonight. I tried to lift it up. I thought I had right. a lot of technique. As far as Chesson Street is concerned, uh, letters have been going out to the homeowners uh, if they're interested in moving or selling their property to the borough if they're not not to the to the RDA if nobody is interested the RDA has a plan to move forward with or without the sale so we're hoping over the next couple months this is resolved either way and then the RDA <coughs> excuse me the RDA could come in and Right now, the first 11 houses on one side could be taken down. There might have to be two that are standing, and then from the next two down, they all could come down. 
So either way, we're going to move forward by uh, by the fall. <coughs> Excuse me. We have worked out a tentative agreement right now with Kevin Everett as the uh, work leader. We're changing that position from supervisor to work leader. We're going to have uh, work leader one. A and B. A and B. Mr. Sloan, I want to give a little background. So um, over the last several years when a supervisor has retired, we have not replaced them because we just feel that somebody supervising two or three or four people is really a waste. So uh, when uh, George Waldron retired, he actually officially retired at the end of February, I believe. We advised the union we were not going to replace the supervisor, <clears throat> but we still need somebody to kind of take that role. So we've been negotiating with the union, the non-supervisor union, and what we're proposing to them is we're going to create, there's an already a work leader now. I think he gets a dollar an hour more, and that's Kevin Everett. Uh, we worked it out that we're going to create work leader A, which will have more responsibility, will report to Jim, but won't have the supervisory responsibilities that George had. And the proposal is we would pay that person half the difference of what George was getting. Just round numbers, George was getting $14 more an hour, so this, this person would get $7 more an hour. Uh, and so we're going to save money there. And um, so we s submitted that proposal. Uh, the union has agreed to it. I just have to put it in writing and get everybody to sign off. Uh, Kevin has been acting in, in uh, George's place since October. I think Mr. Dillon is very happy with that arrangement. He seemed to take him to it. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not necessarily his. It has to be posted. But because of the seniority, he's most likely going to get it. So uh, it, once we work out an agreement, it will be posted. And then the work leader, B, will be posted also. Uh, and whoever has seniority and wants it will get that. Uh, so it's kind of worked out pursuant to our overall plan to try to limit this number of supervisors. Uh, so um, I'm going to ask that that be on the agenda for council to approve that work leader A position, and then we'll work out the details. So does anybody have any questions about this, or I think Kevin's doing an outstanding job. But again, the job has to be posted. Anybody could apply for the job that works either in the sewer department or on the street and highway. But I think Jim's. Uh, very happy with Kevin, and the only thing the union did say is that Kevin cannot discipline because he's not a supervisor, and Mr. Dillon has taken that role on, which he would have would have done anyway. And, you know, if not, there was an issue, he would have been the one to come in and discipline. So without that, that could be. We need to vote on that tonight. So that'll be somebody start another. Hey, you want to make the motion now? Approaching, right, made the motion. Second by Mr. Gorman. Questions or comments? All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Okay. The other thing is uh, we talked about recreation that we're trying to uh, work with the AOC and, and this work, the school board to create something. Uh, the Army Corps of Engineers were in town. I've already seen them last week. Uh, assessing the flooding with Silver Lake and different projects. That's, they come in on their own. There's nothing we can do about that, but they've been in town, so if anybody's seen them, you know what's going on. We have a shred event that's planned, which we usually do. We didn't do it last year because of COVID, but we're trying to get the shred event scheduled, hopefully in May or June. Most likely, it's going to get done in June. Just so you know, that the roof, we had somebody come out and evaluate the entire uh, building here with the roof. There's a lot of hidden, they're called hidden gutters that they probably will know more than anybody what I'm explaining. All the copper is split, and there's photographs, Dave, if you want to look at them, Mr. Dillon has. Uh, so we're going to have to go out. There's a lot of maintenance that needs to be done. The clock tower, if you when you leave here, if you look above the glass window, you can see there's a major leak there. There's a leak inside where the girls are. 
So we need a lot of maintenance done on the building. So we don't know if we want to. How old is that roof, Ralph? 15, 17, 18, 18 years. Yeah, we should, we but should, the roof should, isn't bad. It's yeah, good. it's just a, we yeah, never copper. relined the copper hitting gutters. So was if you want to look at the copper some, replaced when the roof no, was installed? No. <laughs> but if you want to look at all that, we, if you look, there's areas on the building that there's a lot of rot that needs to be fixed. The chimney needs a lot of uh, brick pointing. So we're going to try to get proposals put together for council to look at and uh, see how we, we proceed. The new, there's a new sweeper, street sweeper. Everybody's wondering why it's not out. I think the parts are coming from England, am I correct? England. So, so far, we didn't think we need it, and we had to order right. it coming in. So, very hard to get parts right now, so we're hoping to have that running by May 6th, but they're coming out this week to demonstrate a new street sweeper. Because we already spent 20000 last year and 20000 this year, but we figure it's a great backup to have. We never thought we would have to put that much money into it, but it takes a year almost to get a sweeper. So even if we elect, there are about 360,000. Hmm. So even if we elect to move forward with a new one and we decide this summer, we'll have it for next year. I'd like to- I'd like to know about the street sweeper. I'd, can I say something? Sure. Harry Shackcott, that was for you. <laughs> uh, just to give you an, an update on, if you notice Lennox parking lot across from Caesars, there's going to Amazon has applied to park, I think 200 and some of their trucks there. Uh, they work <laughs> at uh, Walmart on 13. It wasn't a permitted use, so they had to move. Lo and behold, it is a permitted use at the Lennox property. So they worked out an agreement where they're going to park in the back of the building for, I think, six months until December. December. In the meantime, we need to address uh, maybe looking at zoning for this entire town for stuff like this because it only can get worse. I believe, and I know when somebody asked a question about this building behind the it's either going to be on or something because I think so. they don't tell you who to straw by who they are. Mm -hmm. So, but, uh, you know. Now, will they be parking uh, like regular vans then or will you it see be? all them vans that say right, yeah. but not any tractor trailer no, thing? No. Okay. The people come, they leave their car, they get in the van, they go deliver. Okay. The fulfillment center is right here on Route 13. Right. I, I know. So okay. we need to really start focusing on things right. like this before we get overtaken with with trucks. We didn't we didn't want any, but. Mr. Slurry, you want to explain yeah, why? Yeah, we, we put some conditions on this, even though it is a permitted use, and it, we, we couldn't battle that. But um, somebody will be, there will be a supervisor there. Um, uh, there's still enough spots for the other workers. If you notice, Lennox has less and less cars back there. So uh, and, uh, they're going to ask the Amazon to ask the truck drivers to use the State Road, Green Lane, North Racker Street, not come through town. We can't enforce that, but we're asking them not to be driving all through town. So, but it's only till December. It's short term. My guess is they're going to have to do something over on 13. They just haven't gotten to it so on in the township. So that was kind of the best we could do under circumstances. So, um, and you know, they're good to us in that they open their lot for do up and all. So we we don't want to ruffle any feathers. And the fact that in short term, we'll just have to deal with it. You know, they have 200 some spots. It doesn't mean they're going to fill them. Uh, but uh, so. So I don't, no, will they be using Green Lane to come? I we, guess. We've asked. Well, if they're going to the fulfillment center, I guess they will be. But we've asked them. They asked Amazon to limit. Don't come through town if you don't have to. So, but. If they're going to the fulfillment center, it's on 13, they'll go down Green Lane because it's right there. Wow. Yeah, but that, there's, it's a state road, nothing to do about it. And I know. And, and where long? it's at, most likely you have to use Green Lane because if you go to Edgeley, you got to come back and make a U-turn. 
Yeah. So it most likely are going to come out of there, go up Green Lane. That, that's going to be a problem. Yeah. That's going to be a real problem. I mean, you need to. You don't expect all these things that come up in zoning. I mean, Sally basically denied this, and their attorney wrote back and said, that, "No, it's a permitted use." So. Yeah, th these are new uses, just like these truck uh, parking lots, like they have in the township. So, so we'll be talking about developing some zoning. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we just can't exclude them. That's the problem. But uh, it's a new thing. It's a new. It's it's a new world where you have the concentration of trucks and vans. You never had that before. Mm -hmm. You go anywhere. You go to Wawa and you see ten or twenty in there getting yeah, gas. Drone parking because they're going to be delivering by <laughs> drones. <laughs> is that right? Okay. So the other thing is. We're going to be working on the three locks that are down at the wharf, the lookout uh, the platforms at the marsh. Mm -hmm. We're looking at repairing the three of them in-house, hopefully with our guys. Uh, the money will probably come out of some of that money that we got from the, the 150000 from the rink. The other thing we have uh, signed off with RNS contracting to uh, pave the basketball courts, rebuild the bridge, and uh, repave all the areas of the path that need to be repaved. So in the next, we, we told them, if you can, the first thing is the, the courts and the bridge, because somebody, again, another board, somebody stepped through the bridge. So we're getting close to shutting the bridge down. Uh, He's doing the labor. He put a bid in for the labor. The borough is buying all the materials, so we're saving a lot of overhead and costs by by taking this uh, approach to doing the three projects. And the last thing I have is uh, the SEPTA train station. I mentioned a while ago. Right now we're in a process of uh, trying to get some money to redo that station maybe some ADA elevators and new signage platforms, things like that. I should know something. I was try supposed to meet with people this Thursday, which I canceled the meeting, uh, unfortunately, because uh, Mr. Wade passed away, and it, that is more important to me than any other grant that we can get for the town. So uh, I told them to reschedule it for another time whenever they call me. To meet there, you know, I'll keep try to keep council informed. <coughs> that's it. Anybody have any questions for me, Louie? I, I just wanted to mention that the uh, uh, Danucci's really did a remarkable job tearing that, you know, that, that street down. He didn't bother. It seems like it came down without any any effort, you know. Right. And I know it was a lot of effort, but they really did a good job. And I think we should pass that message along to the RDA and even send a a letter to Danucci that we appreciate the job they did, and uh, it really looks it really looks nice. Right here. That's all I have. Well, I'd like to say something. Um, it's no longer Lennox; it's called Riverview now. They, that's who owns it, Riverview. So it's no longer Lennox owning it. Just so people know that. So we have one more thing for the agenda is to authorize the closing of uh, Pond Street for the mural dedication mm -hmm. on all 13. I think you should just make that official. Louie, make the motion. I have a second by Ms. Betty. Questions or comments? All those in favor? The mural will be in charge of that. Jim, you have coordination? <laughs> <laughs> my motion, bro. Mr. Devine. Yeah, I just have a couple things. Um, the first thing I was, I just want to reiterate what uh, what Ralph said about Steve Wade. That was, you know, that was sad. I mean, super sad news when I heard that. And uh, not that I was as close as he was with Louie and, and Ralph, but he, he really was a great human being, great guy. And his legacy will be his, you know, his family, his beautiful wife and kids. He, he was a good human. And I'd also like to uh, recognize the passing of of Dominic uh, Petrina, who passed away, who was living in the uh, Grundy Towers, and he, he passed from, from COVID. So that was one of the things I wanted to recognize. Um, 
where the hell did I do? I had a couple of street sweeper we talked about. So that's not going to be that will be publicized before they start getting tickets. Yeah, we always do. I know. I just want to make sure. I, you know, because always a two-week race period. Okay, and somebody asked me. That's why. And then the other thing I had was, um, are we are we grooming somebody else for the uh, zoning officer job? Somebody said that there was. Uh, they saw John Miller. Somebody else was in the corner pointing and showing different things. Are we grooming somebody else for like a part-time job or anything? Not that I know. No. Mr. Dillon? Not that I'm aware of. No? Well, no. Sometime, <laughs> sometimes him and Sally go to court or mm -hmm. they'll go look at a zoning, like somebody applies for something. Mm -hmm. So maybe she was in the car. Uh, okay. Gotcha. Yeah, rumors start. That's why I asked. That's why I asked. On Friday, I had to have John and Mark deliver packets. Oh, okay. I had a problem uh, getting get them out normally. Gotcha. Yeah, that was a whole pack, wasn't it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's why we had to meet the third week. There was just not enough time to get this done. I'd like to make a motion to... Uh, I'll have Mr. Wait. Devine's done. Yeah, that's it. Wait, I have one more thing. I'm uh, sorry. Uh, Happy birthday, Jace. Mimi loves you. Aww. Sorry, buddy. Happy watches. birthday, Jace. <laughs> Anybody have anything Aunt else? Aunt Lorraine loves you. Mm -hmm. uh, motion. I'd like to make a motion to adjourn. Favor. Bye. Bye. Bye.